Catheter ablation is recommended for drug refractory atrial fibrillation. There are two commonly used methods, radiofrequency ablation and cryoablation. Radiofrequency ablation is better established and requires only limited use of fluoroscopy, but it requires significant specialized training. Cryoablation is a relatively simpler procedure, but it requires more extensive fluoroscopic guidance to position the balloon. The authors of a new study sought to establish whether cryoablation is non-inferior to radiofrequency ablation for drug refractory atrial fibrillation. The authors randomized 762 patients to one of these two procedures and followed them for 18 months. 384 were randomized to radiofrequency ablation, and 378 were randomized to cryoablation. The primary efficacy endpoint was time to first documented clinical failure after a 90-day post-procedural recovery period. Treatment failure was defined as recurrent atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, atrial tachycardia, need for antiarrhythmic drugs, or need for repeat ablation. The primary safety endpoint was a composite of death, cerebrovascular events, or treatment-related adverse events. The primary efficacy endpoint occurred in 143 patients in the radiofrequency group and 138 patients in the cryoablation group for a hazard ratio of 0.96. The 95% confidence interval of 0.76 to 1.22 met the pre-specified threshold for non-inferiority of 1.43. The primary safety endpoint occurred in 51 patients in the radiofrequency group and 40 patients in the cryoablation group for a hazard ratio of 0.78. The authors conclude that cryoablation is non-inferior to radiofrequency ablation for the treatment of patients with drug refractory paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Full trial results are available at NEJM.org.